Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. I am really excited for today's episode for a lot of reasons. One, because I've been having offline conversations with this character for a long time and I'm excited to bring this conversation out into the open where more people can benefit from it. Uh, David Beckstead is a hero of mine in photography and I know to many of you, when I first started getting into uh, photography, I remember the early days of the internet and stalking and and coming across this, and some of you guys will remember this, the, the, the dark or light uh, website that was David Beckstead. And I remember clicking on the light and seeing the spiraling staircase and the bride and thinking, how did he do that? And how did he build this crazy interweb thing? And all that went behind it. And then um, once in a while, I don't know if you guys have had this experience, when you meet somebody, sometimes uh, the, the stuff that they they have made either increases in value or decreases. And this is what amazed me about David Beckstead was when I, I was so impressed with his work, when I met him, his work actually improved in my mind. So I'm thrilled to have you on. So welcome to the show, David Beckstead. Wow, thank you. That was a nice introduction. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to think about that, old, that older site that I had. Uh, um, many times um, people say, why didn't you keep that site? And I say, well, because you got to stay fresh and yep. change. But ever since then, I've had so many requests to bring that site back, and maybe someday I will. You know. Well, it's fun, even as even as like an artifact, to put it like in the archives so people can kind of go, wow. And, and I'm with you. I love the idea of, yeah. of reinventing and creating new, and, and really kind of that starting from scratch mentality is so resourceful on so many levels. But we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah. First, first yeah. of all, for, for folks, and, and there aren't many in the planet left, but if there are any, uh, if you if no one knew David Beckstead and they met you probably at an airport on your way to some exotic land and you introduce right. yourself and you say you're into photography and they say well how did you get there how do you respond to that what give us a little short, short biography on 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 Beckstead <laughs> well I guess um, as a whole I've been very independent natured and um, my my parents uh, everybody around me um, has always been very open to allowing me. I've lived in the country most of my life. Hmm. And, you know, they would say things like, oh, just go for a hike, take off, and I'd be very, very, very independent, and independent to a fault. Hmm. And um, it got to the point where um, even in, when I, I used to be in the Forest Service, I used to fight forest fires. Hmm. And uh, I would be in a crew of 20 photographers, I mean, tw 20 people, 20 guys. And um, it was difficult. I was, it was difficult to be have the group mentality that I, I could, I had a hard time sharing that. I was very independent hmm. and uh, I brought that along with me everywhere I've gone to the point where I could, the good part about that would be I could jump off and do what I wanted anytime and my mom would always say, oh, just do it. I said, I'm going to go to India. Mom would go, oh, that's great, go to India. <laughs> I'm going to be a photographer. Oh, that's great. You know, I mean, so I've always had great support with um, you know people and everybody around me saying do do what you love be who you want you know mm. so that's interesting that's important and by the way you're gonna this is a very down home kind of show as you know and when we have barking dogs and I'm sure my my daughter will walk in on the show at any moment and and maybe on your side too so that's all fair game there's no problem with that. yeah <laughs> um, yeah and uh, and I should probably mention this too I'm so excited about you being on the show I, I forgot to mention this if you're new to the show and you've never seen Fast Track Coaching let me explain what we're doing here we're basically just having a conversation like David and I have many times uh, again usually at an airport while he's going somewhere and uh, okay. and we happen to bump into each other or we're at some event and um, uh, the point is to let you guys in on these conversations and to participate in it and it's short we're only going to be on the line for about 30 minutes but the point is for for as the dialogue gets going, for you to both listen into what I'm curious about, and as I'm interviewing my guest around business and creativity, that you get some value from that. But that as you, it occurs to you that you have some questions for my guest or myself, that you just go ahead and ask it in the live recording. Or if after the fact, if you're catching this on replay, no problem. Uh, my invitation is for you to um, reach out to either of us, uh, you know, through the various social media channels or whatever is helpful for you. But our, our point here isn't to solve the world's problems. We're not making any grand promises <laughs> that you're going to do anything extraordinary right, out of right, listening. Right. And in fact, if this is a distraction from you getting some work done, maybe you should shut this down and go get some work done. That's no problem. But uh, for those of you who have a little margin, we want to give you a little break, a little refresher, a couple nuggets, and then let's all get back to work. So that's the purpose of the call. And um, and I and and to jump into what you're just saying, David, um, 
I, I'm struck by a lot of things. This kind of lifestyle of independence and this focus on um, having a supportive environment or a context from which you could do the creative things that you've done. And you know, I, I've said this to you in, offline in the past, but you're an eclectic individual. I mean, who gets to be a fire jumper uh, and and a photographer? Uh, it, it, right. it you know it kind of it reminds me a little of guys like um, uh, you know like Joe Busink who, uh, who who by the way it's funny the three of us are going to be in Brazil here this fall uh, but yeah you know, that's I think, right. I think hey. Joe had a past life as like a sniper or something or like a sharp uh, a sharpshooter like you people who uh, no no wonder yeah. you have ridiculous talent you've gone to places that <laughs> most people you know only dream of seeing. Um, how much have yeah. have those exotic lands or those kind of crazy John Muir like independent realities influenced your creative right. work? You know, uh, a ton because um, I love traveling overseas and I love the experiences that you get. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get uh, in America. You can you can kind of get a little bit um, jaded by mm -hmm. uh, the all the things that we have. And after a while, you can start expecting things to happen to you. And when you go overseas and you find out all these people that don't have what we have here, then um, you come home uh, with a lot more respect hmm. uh, for life as a whole and hmm. life living. And um, my business has always been about uh, my life, and my and my business has always been coexisted. I always go like this when I teach. I go, my business, my life, everything's here yeah. because I that's way I want it. You know that's. In fact, the reason why I decided to be a destination wedding photographer is because I wanted to travel. <laughs> you know, right. I wanted to see different. I wanted to see different lands because many people actually can make more money if they stay home. They do three portraits, they do two weddings, and they can work on their business at home. But that doesn't matter to me because it's about the experience and about the life thing. You know, in fact, I've had many times where brides and grooms will say, um, you know, can you come and can you photograph for three or four days, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll start negotiating. The fun, I'll say. I'll say. Well, you don't have to pay me for every second that I photograph, but if you put me on a, a boat with you and then you, you include me with all the fun stuff, huh. then uh, then we become friends and we'll have a great time. I'll become a guest, and that's kind of how I've been with all my weddings. Is that uh, you know it's the experience huh. as much as anything else. And so I've been to oh no, almost eighty countries if you can believe it, hmm. and it's been a passion of mine for years and years and years and. Uh, um, I still love it. It's amazing. You know, we were talking recently. We were um, waiting for a while for our plane from uh -huh. Brazil, and I still, I still don't mind being in, on the plane. I don't mind. I like it all. It's amazing. I'm, I'm just passionate about it. So yeah, it's funny. Uh, one of my best friends uh, here locally, um, he does a lot of traveling, and some of that it, it comes out of his sense of uh, you know, if you're asked him what's his favorite place in the world, what's his happy place, he would literally say without a cynical up in the air kind of model like we're trying to escape anything but he would say like an airplane because like an airplane seat because the seat represents a new adventure another destination and and it seems like there's a resonance with that with you too especially around really like lifestyle design like you you, you no kidding are davidbeckstead.com because it's it is the whole of you and it is your right. business and and yeah. you have you've created a, a remarkable Contact. And for folks, talk a little bit about where you live relative to the destination <laughs> wedding. Because I think some people understand this, but it's pretty unique. Yeah. For, for many, many years, I've lived kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I, I jokingly say, uh, hard to find by GPS. And, uh, because, <laughs> Except for it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find by GPS, right? Because um, uh, all my life, I've lived um, away from cities as a whole. Mm. And, um, and there was actually a time when my passion for this business was so powerful and so strong that what I should have done, you know, I'm not really, but what I should have done was move to like Hollywood, become the, you know, the celebrity photographer of the world. But that's not, but I pulled back and I even told my wife, I said, you know, this is going this direction and I need to hold back a little bit and retain who I am as a person and what I love and what I'm passionate about. And what I love and what I'm passionate about is nature, canoeing, being out there, exploring. And so I moved, I was in Arizona, I had five acres in the mountains. And, um, and then I decided I needed to move further away, um, <laughs> you know, and get out there. So I'm on the border of Canada and Idaho, and um, I got 25 acres on a lake, 
and um, it takes me two hours to drive to the airport, two and a half hours to drive to the airport, and no one lives anywhere near me. And uh, Except for your hold family. on for a second. Hold on. Hey, Asia, what? No, go, 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 go. I'm doing something. Go, 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 go. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that, my friends, is the Beckstead's in a nutshell. Go, 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 go. <laughs> go, go, go. Uh, that's my little daughter, Asia. I named her Asia because I've been to all countries, and I can't wait to take her to all of them. Wow. You know, what? one of the things, just for a second, David, um, I think there's a, one of the, the disadvantages of being in the middle of nowhere is bandwidth. And I, we couldn't hear the last thing you said, the, the volume cut out. So say that last part again, how, what you named Asia and, and from there. Oh, you're still silent. Hmm. Okay, okay hold you're, on. you're back. I can hear you now. Go ahead. I'm back? Yep. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I've been, I've been battling bandwidth for a long time, living out in the middle of nowhere. But it's one of the, uh, one of the lower problems, one of the problems, you know, that I have. But as a whole, when I just jump out on my lake and go swimming, then I realize that it's I'm back good. to normal. It's, it's not a big deal, you know. I, send, I used to send my DVDs to my stepdad who would upload them to Pictage, right? So because I, I couldn't, I didn't have enough bandwidth to do it. But, you know, it's, it's an amazing, it really is amazing life. And I really have done a lot uh, of amazing things. And I, I really, I just, and I'm, I'm, Asia's getting a chance to see the world. And, uh, hmm. um, <clears throat> and I still love everything. I love my life. I love my wife. We've been married for 20 years. Hmm. Uh, we have an incredible relationship. Um, it's just, it's just working. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, and I'm still excited about photography. Mm. It's incredible. Well, you know, let's 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 talk about this for a second because I know that there's some folks at home who are listening in, who are like, "Well, that's awesome. 25 acres on a lake in the middle of nowhere. That's kind of like the reason people work hard is to somehow retire in the environment that you're in, but you actually live there." And and I know that they are saying to themselves that they don't live in that context and they're discouraged and they're, they, ha they weren't brought up in an environment that was supportive and, and had that kind of, yeah, go adventure. But they got, they were kind of burdened. They're both, they're both, sorry, they're, they're all both burdened and blessed with the kind of independence plug that you have, but they don't have a, they don't have the support system to, to help them in that. And, for the folks that, that aren't living on the lake, that didn't have the environment you're growing up in, but you know that they're kindred with you. They, they wish they, they could play that out. What would be some advice you'd give? Like you're just sitting around coffee with this, and I know you had a thousand of these conversations. Uh, how, do you, right. how do you engage folks who, who don't have that supportive context, and what advice do you give them? You know, everything can change, um, and things change all the time. Um, this whole business changes constantly, it sure does. and you have to kind of you kind of have to embrace the change and actually enjoy the change. That's that's the tough part. That's the tough part for a lot of people mm -hmm. to enjoy the change and and embrace the change that are happening. All these things that are happening in our business. Mm -hmm. um, yet, um, hold on, hold on for a minute. Hold on. No problem. Take your time. I could do a song and dance for you guys while we're waiting. You don't, you don't want that. <laughs> He'll be back. I got, <clears throat> I got a little girl that wants me to help her o open some plastic thing for some candy. Oh, in a minute, I'm leaving you. Right. It's no problem. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing in just a second. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's okay. It's no problem. But you were um, saying, you're saying everything I'm, changes, I'm, and the, and there's a need to begin to, um, embrace the change. I don't know. Make it your friend. Yeah, I really think people should force more change on themselves and really try to to make things happen. I know a lot of people that seem to they feel a little stuck where they're at and they need to do something to make those changes. I guess that's I guess I was blessed or maybe my grandparents and different people around me um, blessed me with the idea that that you should just make changes happen all the time and jump out and do things. Hmm. You know, <clears throat> you know I read an article a while back that said that said the most successful people or the or the happiest people are the ones that never try to get all these things in a line. Not you know one through uh, A B C D E F. They just make these jumps so quickly without any safety net or without any knowledge of what's going to happen next. Hmm. And uh, I've I've always been uh, able to make those leaps. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, and I actually enjoy that kind of leaping and jumping and seeing what happens because if um, I get a little bored if I'm, I'm stagnant, you know, I want to go, what's, what's next? Let's go over here. Let's go do that. <laughs> and my wife goes, oh, are you, are you serious? We're going to go do that now? And she has a great time. I married a great woman that, that you likes really, those changes There's no too. doubt you did that right. Uh, and and she's a very adaptable woman. Uh, but but to, to that, it's funny you say that because I, I, it's funny. If there's one picture I've seen of you more than ever, it's that you know air guitar scissor kick, uh, kind of yeah. jumping. That should be your logo. It should right. just be two feet off the ground. You know, right? <laughs> make, I'm always jumping. You know, because I'm always excited. It's always yeah. so much fun to get in the air and have fun. You know, I mean, yeah. And, you're right. I mean, we were. I was in Brazil, and I was jumping all over the place, and everybody wanted me to jump for the pictures because they they were they saw the vibe and the and and I I felt the vibe, and I just wanted to jump, you know, and yeah. and uh, you know, just like the just like the song, might as well jump, right? That's it. Well, okay, so so no. let's talk about that too, because do you think that you're just an outlier, like you're a rare bird, or do you think do you believe that? Uh, it's kind of the age-old question. Is it, was that born in you? Was it, was it just learned? Like, is it nature, nurture? Is there a possibility that somebody who's listening to this, who's really considering, should I take a risk on myself, should do it? Or, is, or for some people, yeah. it's like not a good idea. You know, I wouldn't teach photographers if I didn't think people could um, could change, and I didn't think Dude, so. I do I believe everybody can do anything that they want to do, and you have to sometimes. Just poke them a little bit. You have to just get them out of their comfort zone mm. and say, "Okay, try this." So, um, uh, a lot of times, when I, when I, before I start teaching, I'll say things like, "You're not going to understand right off the bat what I'm trying to get down here, but after a while, maybe even when you get to your next wedding, all of a sudden this stuff will come out, and you'll go, ah, the freedom that that mm. I'm that I gave them." The, maybe the uh, spinning the dial a little bit, you know, hmm. playing around with exposures without without an idea of where you're going to go with it, um, a little bit unplanned, and uh, you know, um, I love the ideas of unseen and unplanned. So I'm always constantly playing around with my exposures to see what would happen, hmm. and um, you know. Um, People don't take enough risks, and I think that they need to take a lot of risk in all parts of their lives and try something different. Mm. If you're not happy with something, make a change. You can't stay. You can't stay in that position very long, mm. otherwise it's going to drag you down. I have so much fun in life, and I have a, a lot of passion for the world, and I have a lot of passion for where the United States is going. I have a passion where the world's going. Mm. I, I, I believe that photography is going in a great direction. Mm. I, I really don't, I don't see all the negative, negative, there's just negative all the time, a lot of negative stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I don't allow, I, you know, my wife goes, I sometimes wish you would take a little bit more control in this house. And, and I said, I am, I will try. What I don't want is any negative stuff in this house at all. You know, because mm-hmm. I, I love a positive environment. So I promote that home I promote it all around me a positive environment for the life you know I mean I I've traveled to some pretty weird places in the world dark, including tough the, places too right yeah, yeah even things like uh, Auschwitz I've been to Auschwitz I walked around Auschwitz in Poland and when I came back I realized um, man we have no it reason to complain whatsoever mm. I mean historic history with all these wars and all these things that have happened, you know, I mean, we should just, and, and all these people are having problems in the United States and they're yelling at the red light. I just want to say, ah, come on, get back to reality. We have it great here. Mm. And, uh, but I've been to a lot of countries and, and, and there's some wonderful, amazing people everywhere. And people are trying to work out the problems and all the photographers. I love to see the photographers in different places in different countries, mm. like Brazil that you and I were at. Yeah. Um, excited, excited about what's happening. You know, they just got to find the their their niche and their place and their style. You know, so yeah, it was it was super refreshing to be in that context with you and just see the sense of, um, you know, even on, there's a lot of talent down there, and, and but there was more enthusiasm than there was talent, and the enthusiasm was so intoxicating. Like there was this real sense of, man, they're hungry. They they want to make a difference, um, and. And I see that, you know, in this context, too, certainly in the U.S. and Canada and beyond. And, and in, in all the places that you've been to and that you've seen. Um, and by, actually, let me pause for a second because I'm going too fast. Because you, when you talked about the Auschwitz thing and, and really appreciating what we're in the midst of. Um, and in contrast with these first world problems, like people getting all upset on, on the Twitter or on the Facebook about, you know, whatever the, the drama is of the week. I, I appreciate how much you just disregard it. It's almost like you treat it as though 
gosh, there sure are a lot more important things to pay attention to than those things. Or maybe you literally don't know they're happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm checking the internet all the time, you know, sure. and uh, you know, finding out where, where the news is and things like that. Hey, there you are. What's like? Hello, hello. Hey. Say hello. Hey, hi, sweetie. <laughs> Good to see you. She's dying. She's dying. She's been dying to get on here and say, "Ooh, what's going on?" Did well, you, our, did you our, see her in Brazil? She, I did. She had to I be did. In... She, I saw her all over the place. <laughs> and I, by the way, I love the travel. The guys as a family, it's just so cool. Um, but you know, I, she's, she's been all over the place, and it's really learning, really learning a lot of things. Yeah. Okay. Shh. Okay. Go. 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 Wait. Go, can go, I ask Asia go, a question? Go, go. I think I want to ask her a question. Yeah. yeah. Because our, our, our ratings are shooting through the roof every time she's on screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, Asia, get her in the center. Get her in the center. Okay, so, Asia, Asia I have a question. What's your favorite thing about your dad? Um, going swimming. Going what? swimming? Going swimming with your dad? Do you love swimming in your lake? Is that what you love to do? What else? Um, like playing with the dogs with him. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. We we do a lot of play together. We have three golden retrievers, and they run around the property, and we have a great time. With of them. course you have three of them. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing right now? We're learning mushrooms, aren't we? We're learning how to identify mushrooms, mm -hmm. right? She is an amazing mushroom picker. We know she finds them. She finds them. Wow. I was like, wow, mushrooms. We haven't eaten any yet. We're not trying that yet. We're That's just a good idea. Learning. We're just learning right now. <laughs> That's great. Well, Asia, thank All you right, for being on the show. We'll see you. Bye bye. Hey, go go go. Go go go. Go go go. Go go go. Stay outside. So I I know there are people right now who are in the comments thread right now saying things like, okay, let me get this straight. They live in the middle of nowhere. She wears right. tie dye shirts, and her favorite things is mushrooms. Hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, really, no doubt. Well, but she's great. I'm teaching her all sorts of cool things. We put bugs on her hands, and and we go out and look for earthworms. And you know, I'm teaching her how to be, uh, you know, a, a nature girl. So she's she's great, and she travels the world. She's seen some amazing places. Uh, she's going to be so uh, varied when she gets older. Have she has all these choices and ideas. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. She's she's doing great. Cool. Well, l let's switch gears for a second because. I yeah. want to ask you about, because you, you really do have a unique perspective. You've seen a lot internationally, certainly nationally. You've, you've spoken at the highest level. You've taught a zillion workshops. You, you know, There's a ton of resources you've created for people. You just published a book yeah. down in, in Brazil when we were down there recently. Yeah. So many that cool things cool. going on. Talk a little bit about when you think, when you say you're hopeful for America and you're hopeful for photography and that sort of thing, what do you see coming down the pipe? Like, Where, where do you see our industry going that you're so optimistic about? You know, what I'm really optimistic about is that you can reach out and pretty much grab anything that you want. It used to be more of a local market where you would you would kind of say, all right, what do I do to fulfill this local market? Um, and it would be very broad and, uh, and you would try to kind of fit something in, but now you can choose what you want. In fact, what's interesting is you can just go down the list of of ideas and niches and and these and, and actually fulfill them. It's incredible. Like if you want to be the best um, golden retriever photographer in the world, you can be and make a good living at it if you just put your your effort into it. If you want to be a um, a, a goth wedding photographer, if you want to be a you know, seriously, if you want to be the right. goth wedding photographer of the world, you can be. If you want to be a the cowboy, cowboy photographer, wedding, the cowboy wedding photographer, yeah. it's right. Possible. You want to be in you if anything you want to be, it's right there. In fact, what's interesting is you could actually support your local market uh, on one brand and then brand out um, internationally or or nationally into any other type of niche you want to. Or you could have multiple niches. Um, you can do what you want. All this is just, and, and the thing is, is that these templates for websites are cheap. Uh, you can get some things for free. Um, um, you can start any kind of small business you want to instantaneously, and do what you want. You know, and it's it's incredible. I mean, the, the it's just it's so open right now because the internet is just saying saying you know what do you want, and uh, you know you can do it. And, and and so I'm like, I was telling Cassandra, well, what if uh, what if photography didn't really it kind of went down. 
I said, man, I could be a web designer. That wouldn't be all that hard to do. Just get, to, just get, <laughs> just learn it, you know. And and you know, it's like you could do anything. That's, that's what's so awesome. cool about it. And that's what's. And I, I noticed that a lot of other countries that a lot of photographers are starting to learn that you can do anything you want, you know, and you can reach out. I have a friend in Slovenia, and he, could, and he, we talked a long time, and then finally he said, I want to be a destination wedding photographer. And next thing you know, he's a destination wedding photographer. Hmm. You can, you know, that's. So I, I see a lot of. I hear a lot of people talking about um, the downsides of things that are happening, and I just don't see it. I think that um, there's a, so, so many upsides, and equipment is changing all the time, mm -hmm. and you have to you certainly have to flow with the equipment. I think equipment is dictating a little bit of what direction we could go um, in next, but I actually appreciate that, even though I'm not a technical guy at all. I don't, I don't actually appreciate equipment very much. I, don't, I prefer just to shoot. Uh, but if some, but if some software comes along that's going to help me, or or a new camera system is going to help, or everything's going video, whatever it takes, I'm I'm, I'm there. I'm, mm -hmm. it's a, my attitudes are already there. You know. Well, I, I think you know, well, so. it's funny that the, the part that I'm hearing that you're taking, and and hear this in the best possible light, but I'll, in a sense taking for granted or like assuming, is that one phrase, whatever it takes, because. Because I I'm with you I'm I'm I I'm very much in the camp of I think there's a lot more opportunity than there is deficit right now. Yet at the same right. time when I when I kind of look around the industry and beyond and um, there there can be a default to people not taking advantage of those tools beyond what everyone is already doing. And what I see you doing consistently is, oh wow I can go do this. Well what else can I do with it? And you you kind of ring the you get every ounce of opportunity out of every one thing that that you pick up in your hand and um that's uncommon like i don't see people leveraging the the moment and the tools that we have the same way you do but what i'm hearing you say is like if people got clear and committed towards those things more opportunity right. would open up than they've ever seen possible Oh, totally. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's just all, it's really all in front of you. It's, it's surprising. The internet is opening up so much. It's mm -hmm. all there. And it's mm -hmm. right in front of you. And all you have to do is just start research. I noticed that a lot of, I, I, um, I noticed a lot of people um, learn best in a school atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They, they want somebody to tell them what to right. do. Right. Instruction. And I, and one thing that I've, I learned best um, being self-taught. And uh, but people need to be more self-taught. They need to be able to get on the internet, spend a couple of hours, and research an, an idea. Mm. And um, and if they have an idea, they shouldn't let it sit. They should write it down on a word document and they say, "Okay, I'm going to go check this out and spend some time." What if you know? Um, but but you got to follow. You got to follow your own dreams and your own heart. Mm. Uh, that's where my stuff comes from. That's mm. what I do. Everything comes from here, by my own heart. And um, I've I've noticed that when I look back on my past. Everything that I've ever done follow my passions and my heart and my love and my happiness. And I've, all, I've been that way ever since because um, that's the only way I really know how to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't follow anybody else's heart, anybody else's you know, style. I, I kind of pull it out from, from where I want from down, down here mm -hmm. or inside. Um, I get a lot of great influences and then, and then from there I, you know, I move Pretty on. Yeah. But, well, it's, it's, yeah. funny. it's funny, David. Like one of the things that I pre – I mean – even that old phrase of um, all all learning is self learning on some level, even if you learned it at school, like there's a sense of personal responsibility that I'm hearing that you take, and also that you're recommending that that even if you have a chance to like I, I just had a chance to speak at Brooks uh, Institute a week or two ago, and I uh, had a chance to meet with this guy named Chris Orwig who'll be on the show shortly, and and it it was it was such a great time. And we were talking about his students, Chris and I were, and he was saying how there really are two kinds of students. There's the kind that took advantage of an education. Like I would be so jealous to have a chance to go and learn at a place like Brooks, but you could go to Brooks and squander it. You could not own it and take responsibility for it and miss it. And that's kind of what I'm hearing you say is like kind of the world is Brooks right now. Like we, what can't you go learn right now? Um, Cause everyone has access. So if you have access, then it just becomes a matter of how do you figure out your own heart and apply it at a level that that supersedes everybody else. Um, and I, I guess that's the part where, like the gumption, the chutzpah, where's that in our industry right now? Because <laughs> uh, it seems yeah. like that's where the opportunity is. 
Yeah, no, no, it's scary. The problem is you've got to get beyond what's scary. Um, yeah. I think that a lot of people, um, it, it, it's just that it's in tuned in them to be scared of something. And, um, and it's okay to be scared, though, but you, gotta, you have to embrace risk, embrace change, and jump into the scary thing and try it and see what happens. Because uh, that, that, that a lot of people just don't. It's very difficult to, to, uh, uh, to do that. So I think, a lo- I think the big thing is you just gotta, you gotta make the leaps and, and try and try to see what, and you gotta embrace uh, mistakes. You gotta be happy with your mistakes. You gotta try, you gotta be like, I wanna make a mistake today. Because if you don't make mistakes, you know, you're, not, you're really not going to push the boundaries, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I even wrote a whole keynote about mistakes because I really feel passionate about the idea that you need to make more mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, you're not pushing hard enough. Well, it's the people that make a lot of mistakes are the people that actually are going to be more successful in everything they do. You know it's I mean? funny because so. I, I, I hear people at home nodding to that and maybe even saying nice things in the comments. But I don't actually see, I don't believe them. Because uh, they don't then go go like what you're saying. You're not kidding. This isn't just hyperbole. You're saying no, really, go make a mistake today, so that we can That's have right. a chance to go do something. That's totally. I'm saying go out and purposefully make mistakes. Because if you're not making mistakes, then you you're not pushing it hard enough. So like if like um, what am I going to do today? I'm going to actually shoot at 12 o'clock sun. Um, harsh sunlight and I'm gonna to try to make as many mistakes as possible and see what happens what I play with my camera spin the dial go five spot stops underexposed and see how it appears on the back of the LCD do you like that do you do you not like that yeah you got to you know there's so many people there's so a lot of social pressures in the in the world even social pressures in photography to be to ride a certain direction yeah and you need to be able to take that never and and go explore that never and mm-hmm. see and see if it's something that you want to do. Mm. But, uh, you know, I think that where the direction is going is there's going to be a lot more niches and a lot more people are going to have to find where they need to belong. Mm. And it's amazing how you're seeing these people make a living out of inventing something very, very small, Mm. some idea that they're fulfilling. But if they're fulfilling to a lot of people around the world, not just a local market area, um, but but they can provide that at home sometimes even by even while they're watching their kids. Mm. You know, it's surprising what they can do, you know. So I even wrote... I wrote the book that I have, and I'm going to write more books. I, I, I'm just excited. It's amazing that I, I didn't even, I was terrible at school. Mm-hmm. I was terrible at um, spelling and grammar, and I wanted my, I, I had in my head, I am going to um, write better, spell better, do, do better grammar, and, I, and then I'm, someday I'm going to write a book. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I'm excited. I want to write another book. You know, you just got to push. Go. Mm-hmm. Do it. You know? Uh, take the leap. I think that I think you can't have everything in a row. There's no way. You just got to take the leap. You just take a leap first. Land in the mud there's, and then pull there's out. Your next, there's your next book title, and you better write it. Take the leap. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure that's a lot true about that. Well, you know, it's funny. Like even 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 as you're describing the whole kind of, you have to go out and make a mistake or pay attention to the fear, the scareness. Um, and part of me is even thinking like to treat to treat the fear as an indicator. Like, yep. If you're scared, you're on the right path. Like if you have that sense of like, Ugh, that that might be a yes. positive indicator as opposed to when people have that, they have the flight or fight response. Um, right, right. Is that is that no, too they, strong, or would you agree with that? Oh no, no, they need to hit it head on. They need to, I need they need to have that. They need to feel that uh, vibration in their body and and and, and go forward and, and and conquer it and jump into the next thing. I mean that. Um, I used to do that. I, I do it all the time. I, I just jump before I even take a look. I and I guess what I, what I wrote in that what I heard in that article was basically said that um, um, you need to um, take the leap, make the mistake, and that's why. And then work on that as a foundation to go to win. Um, I'm not. I guess I'm very competitive against myself, mm-hmm. and uh, so I find that um, when I lose, I need to use that as a jumping board to win. Mm. And so I'm always winning, I'm always using that. So in fact, I I do better that way than I do just winning from the start. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I have more positive wins when I when I use the the mistakes and the and the you know the problems that I, that it happened. So um, you know it's it's I'm positive. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing world right now. And you can jump on a plane, go anywhere you want. You can uh, you can see see what you want, do what you want, get out and go for a hike. Uh, you know just 
you know, listen to some classical music and enjoy life and, you know, have, it, there's so many people having problems with their relationships, I don't understand why, mm -hmm. you know, you just got to just communicate and talk and, and you know, and, and just uh, and explore the world, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I've been retired all my life, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, uh, I, I know that there are folks at home who want to take advantage and, and stay in kind of around your influence, because I know there are people who are going to just walk out of this conversation just going like, what can I do? I'm after this. I, I have a new kind of renewed vigor and vim. And, and, and as I know that you do periodically create resources for people, you do workshops periodically in different parts of the world. Um, where should they go to find out that information if they want to check it out? Just davidbexted.com? Well, you know, I, it's it's really fun if you want to do it. Um, you know, just just write David Bexted in Google, and you'll find so many things. It's all there because I've been I've been developing my name at, in on the internet for years and years and years. So if you just and in fact, my little my little card, my business card says Google David Bexted. That's all it says, right? Right. And uh, and just go go with that. But uh, I love one that. place that's uh, yeah, it's so in alignment. It's so in alignment with who you are. Like, why would you go to just <laughs> David Beckstead? Just Google it because there's so many other options just besides Google, that one little spot. It's all there. Just Google it. You know, it's all there. You that's know, and, uh, I'm excited. I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> but um, that's great. Um, one place that's really great is on um, Facebook. Is Abstract Canvas is a group that I I made it a long time ago. Abstract Canvas. And um, it's really some powerful imagery there, and we do a lot of critique and ideas. It's very free, free flowing. Mm. It's got a high level of imagery, and you can go there and look at images all day long, mm. and get so many amazing things there. Mm. It's a great place to go. So awesome. it's, um, you know, it's a really fantastic place. Awesome. Um, and and I was going to say one thing that um, you got to get out mm. and. Um, not do this by yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you want, if you're not, if you're kind of stuck, you're not sure what you want to do. You need to get with other photographers and form groups. And and I am I'm meeting with photographers all over the world. You know, I, I was talking to my friend in Brazil last year, not this year, but the year before, and I said, I want to shoot a wedding with you and hang out with you in Rio de Janeiro. And then I'm I'm I have friends in Romania and all these different places. You make friends and you you get together and you support each other in the change that are happening in this industry. Yeah. And and get some support groups and of like-minded people and go out and make it happen. Go do some uh, model shooting and go out and have some fun. And you know, uh, recently, um, just for the heck of it, I got another photographer together and I said, you know what? Why don't we go? I have some friends and why don't we go and shoot at a skate park? You know, and and because the skate park looks kind of like a like a you know modern art modern yeah, art architect. Yeah. Said, and I said, why don't we go do uh, shoot some ballet? I've never shot ballet before. I thought that'd be really fun. So Perfect. I did, shot I shot ballet just recently. I haven't edited the images just for fun. Yeah. Practice your craft. You know, people need to, you just need to get out and shoot all the time. Shoot yeah. all the time. Yeah, you it, know, sounds, get it sounds so people. It sounds so basic, but it's funny. Like I, the temptation to leave my camera in my bag until a client pays me to pull it out. Is it's I, I've done that for on a number of occasions for years and just and recently it's funny I I stopped wearing a belt I now wear um, I just I just have no belt here because I actually yeah. carry my I have a utility belt down right yeah, there yeah. and I and yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I I look people make fun of me all the time because I, I literally wear this little belt around with a little clip on the side and and I walk yeah, yeah. and and um, I keep my little fifty on there I try not to put long lenses on and. Just, or and I'll switch it up, put a different lens on, but it's just become a new habit, like in the last you know little while, and I'm so, in like I'm just seeing more. I, I just have a different yeah. lens on right now, so I, I'm taking your advice, dude. I, who knows where I could go? And I'm going to give Dave Beckstead credit. Okay, so uh, if if this was valuable, cool. to, if any this was valuable to any guys at home, and I know it was, be sure uh, to thank uh, David Beckstead online on on Twitter and all the other places. And also, uh, let's thank Adorama, at Adorama. Uh, they, they underwrite this thing and make it possible. Um, and I, I want to do everything we can to thank those guys for all that they do. So if you wouldn't mind going on Twitter and, and doing that, I'd appreciate it. Um, come back again next week. Tell your friends about it. Any feedback, let us know. Uh, just put at Dane Sanders or at Fast Track Photo or whatever in the tweets so we can see it. And uh, if you have, want certain guests on, let me know. But uh, we've been doing this for almost three years now. We have a, a huge, fantastic, popular recording list. And this is kind of the thing where if you, if we finally live in an age where you can actually have a conversation with a legend, with a hero, which is, for me, this is such a dream. I'd like to have you on the show, David. So thank you again for being here, man. 
you know, cool. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I'm not a legend. I'm just having a good time in my life. Well, so thank that's... you. So it was great hanging out with you. What a perfect response. All right, everybody. <laughs> we'll see All you right. guys later. Thanks again, David. Talk to you soon. Okay, man. See ya.